Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Thursday. It's June 24th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and um, mostly up today. We uh, we I thought we'd take another look at the daily chart here, and you can see we've been in this little range here. Uh, earlier we had a failed break out the top, then one out the bottom. And we failed out the top again, made a higher low, and we've headed higher here again now. My guess is we'll probably make at least a measured move uh, on this range. Notice we made a perfect measured move to the downside. That's what this dotted blue line is. It's actually the same distance as it is from here, from these two blue lines from here to here. And so that would be the same thing up here. So my guess is that's where we're probably headed. We'll just have to see. But that's what, you know, if I had to, tell you what I thought was going to happen based on looking at this chart. We're probably going to make a measured move up here at a minimum. Um, there is a spike in channel up and we and we maybe have a break here and we already have a, a new high by just a few ticks anyway. So we could always turn back down again at this point. Um, but I think the range play is probably the more it's probably the better play now at this point rather than trying to to look at any kind of rain or trend out of this because prices are really not trending they're just kind of working sideways with an upward bias here so and if you back way out you can see we've been in this upward rally for a long long time so i think we've got room to go further here so we'll see uh, but I thought I'd put this up and show it to you. So let's go back to the. OK, here we are. We're looking at the 2000 tick intraday chart. And you can see we spiked up. Uh, we had a close outside and a move to a new high. And then we just kind of worked sideways. But you can clearly see this green channel is in play. So we had a break here and we've made two legs up and we missed a new high by a single tick. I'm pretty sure both times the. The high here is 426050. 426075. So no, we did make a new high. So by a single tick, we made a new high twice here. And then we've worked back down. And we're still in this range even now. You can see it. This yellow range. So we really spent most of the day. And I expanded this earlier. I was in this tighter range and was looking at a measured move up. But as the day went on, it's pretty obvious that yellow is what we're trading in there. But you could have played this green one. Notice you do get the break and a move to a new high. Like I said, we made a new high by a single tick. Well, that's still a new high. So uh, we sold off pretty quickly after that, only to bounce at the lows again where we've bounced the most and came back. And of course, we turned down. The highs of this was very were very consistent. They were a little easier to trade. I still marked them all in green, uh, but because the bias was really up here, even though we're going sideways, you got a, a little bit of an upward bias here. So, and you can see most of the trades are blue, and there's one or two red red trades in here. Um, but you had to be really patient because we didn't really get a decent trade until almost 11 o'clock today. I just don't see anything in here that's worth trading. There's a possible short here. I mean, there's, like I said, there's always some more that you could argue to be green, maybe. Um, so it really just depends, but we'll, we'll go through them. And if I see something there that I think was, could have been a possibility that I didn't mark, maybe I'll talk about it, but uh, not a lot of trade. So we'll move through it pretty quickly, but we were trending up here and seven o'clock came right right in here on this real tight range and there's no way to trade i don't see anything here worth trading until we get the breakout and it's the first break of the two-tiered channel working up which is let's just give this a color we'll make this one blue but you can see the blue two-tiered channel working up and this is the first break and this is a second entry long uh, because we were going sideways, I don't care so much about that. But the fact that it is a failed break lower and we're looking for a reason to get long on a retest of a high, uh, it is a second entry long. So I like that trade. I marked it green, but I'll be honest with you, I like that trade. 
I wouldn't be afraid to take it. Uh, generally, you'd want to wait on the higher low, but you don't get one here. It just runs up. You, well, I, I take that back. You get a higher low, but it's way up here, and it's not a very good setup. So it's really too late. And you don't get a second entry reversal here either. We just kind of start going sideways. But, however, the blue channel has a break and a new eye in place. So that's not totally out of the ordinary to just go sideways rather than actually selling off so this is considered a correction but in the end it turns out i think we just rolled over into this greenish uh, upper trend trend channel and of course we get the break here and again a move to a new high but at this point it really looks like the yellow channel or the yellow range is the play but they're both in play up until right in here. So, or actually up until we make that new eye, but then you can see the yellow continues to remain in play afterwards. So uh, I'd probably be trading this yellow, yellow at that point. And so anyway, that's what I'm looking at. And I did miss one trade here. This one, I actually marked it blue. We'll talk about it when we get there. Uh, but yeah, we had this failed break lower, and these often turn out to be important lows or highs, and that would have been the the low of the day, really, of the the you know that's right before regular 8:30 open, and that would have been the lowest point we ever saw. So that's an important point, and I like trading that. Again, you prefer a higher low. A lot of times you don't get them, so sometimes if you want to take these trades, you have to take the aggressive setup. So it just depends on how much risk you want to take. But I like that trade. And uh, we've been in that for quite a while. So no surprise that we rallied back up into it. And then, of course, we shoot out the other side, come back, make a first entry. And there's actually a second entry short, but that doesn't set up very well. You want it to be back here off the EMA. Um, I wouldn't really call that congestive. But it's kind of it's they're stacking bars side by side and there's not a lot of room to the high and we actually already have a high in place so this thing could easily turn down so i don't think you want to take a reversal to the upside when the blue trend is actually playing out so i think you're better off just sit tight and then you're clearly in this range here and you can see how many times we tested that we made the high. There's actually a failed second entry long here, but again, I don't think you want to go short yet there, um, because it, it's that's just congestion. You got a clear no body bar. One, two, three, four, five, six bars stacked up there before it breaks lower, and it didn't go. And the the trend is still up at this point. You're still making higher highs and higher lows, so no reason to go short there. I mark this one green because by the time you get here, you've got a triple test basically. And this actually breaks higher and turns down. So my issue here is I'd want to be out before it got back to that midline and that EMA both. So the only real way I would take this one was let it to break lower and drop a limit order far enough back, maybe a tick or two back into this bar and make sure that I had room to get out. I wouldn't use this for your signal bar. It would, I would only trade it on that engulfing bar, and I would want to use a limit order. It's just not a real good setup, but but it's you know it's worth mentioning. So, and of course we run on down, and you get a second entry long here. But again, this is just a range. At this point, I'd be playing the lows off of this line right here. Even though you've got a smaller channel inside that one, you can't really see it. I've got so many colors mixed in. Let me see if I can find, let's see if we can find something different here. Just see if it'll stick out a little more. I don't know if you can see the color difference there or not. It, I've got a really bright chart and these colors, I've noticed I can see them on my screen, but if I look at and I can see them on YouTube on my screen, but if I go to one of my older monitors, I don't see some of these colors because the monitor is just not bright enough, but I have a really good monitor now and it's HD and you can see these, I mean, I could 
tone these colors down on my chart, but I keep them turned up a little bit because most people probably can't see them. Because I, I hear people say they can't see the yellow around the cursor here, but it, it's it's almost too dark on my chart, so I've got it to where I think it's a good point. But if you're not seeing it, there's one there, and maybe I need to make them a little darker too. I don't know, but at one point when I made it dark enough to see on an average screen, it was too dark on this screen. It was covering up the price action. So, you know, there's, there's a, comes a point where I can't make it any darker, but we could still do that here. But anyway, I didn't mean to get off on that tangent, but clearly you got two legs back here, uh, second entry long, but in a range, that's not that important. And also this is an inside bar. So I don't really like that setup on the second entry. However, there's a new low there and you get a first entry and a second entry short that fails. So there's a trap. It's probably going to trap people and you can tell it does by how it runs up. And that's all they did. They ran, came down here and they ran the stops. It made it look like they were going to go lower and got some shorts to load up here probably. And then they run their stops and that finally pushes it through that resistance area. You'll see that over and over. Same thing here. They couldn't get through the resistance area, so they sell it off, trap in a bunch of shorts, and then they run it up. And then they finally get through there. And that's the same thing they did here. Look at that resistance. They couldn't get through. They're having a hard time, so they run it down here and run the stops, and then they get it through there. And we run up, and then we just start going sideways. No trades up here. I don't see anything I like. And uh, then we're working down here. And... You get a first entry and then a second entry that fails. And it's also a second entry short. And you're looking for a retest. The only thing I don't like about this one is you got that trend line right there. And it's still holding. So I think it's super dangerous to go short there. But yet there's a great chance you might get a measured leg all the same and get a break right there. Plus, if it, the range is in play, you may come all the way down to here, which is what happens in they break it lower again. And notice once they do, they run it up and they don't get much higher, but they get a tick higher there. So you may take that trade. There's a lower high here, but that's close enough to the lows. I don't think you want to go short with that ugly bar and uh, just a first entry. Runs down. We get that failed breakout. And then we come back and we test this support area again it holds so you got a higher low here there's not a lot of room back to that ema but it it probably won't matter because we've been swinging i mean you can see we're swinging back and forth through that um, but you might let it break higher and drop a lemon order or a tick or two back because you you could have got filled on that i know and just making sure you got enough room to get out there but it runs up the the better entry is to wait for this true reversal right here. Notice the new low and you get a first entry short and you get a second entry short. So when it turns higher right there on that failed second entry short, we're probably going all the way back to the high side. And so I like going long and you can see quickly they, they ran it up and then we just start chopping sideways again. And there's another second entry here, but it's a very inside bar to, you know, look, there's four or five stacked up, and that's an inside bar. It's really tempting to go long there. I wouldn't risk it. I didn't mark it. Uh, I just don't like those inside bars. They're unreliable. If you took it, it worked. But just know that I'm not even going to mark it green because a lot of times you'll get burned on that. I mean, it's clearly congestive right there. So, um, of course, it runs up, makes a new high, which basically it makes a double top there and turns down. It actually breaks higher and turns down. And there's a long way back to the EMA here. So you may take that trade. You already had a break and, you know, a couple of swings up to a new high. And when, so when it comes by right there, I don't think I'd wait to enter here on a stop. I mean, that bar is so big anyway. It would have worked, but I don't think I would have done that. You can see that's a 12 tick bar, which, you know, in the current volatility we got, that's a big, big bar. So uh, I would enter short here. Hoping to be out before it got back to the EMA. But it may run to the other side, which it does. Um, so you would have got an easy runner on this one. Then it tries to go higher once, twice, and actually breaks higher and turns down on an engulfing bar. 
uh, if you waited to go short after this engulfing bar closed, I think that's too congestive. I don't think I would enter there. But on the engulfing bar, I like entering. Um, and it does continue on down to work. But I don't think I would have the nerve to enter when you get another inside bar and then another that breaks lower and closes back inside and then yet another one. I just think it's too risky. So uh, it ends up working, drops down, and it bounces right here where we at the same spot a little ways away from the ema you could argue for this one to be green but i like this trade because this is clearly a little uh, micro channel you get a break and two two legs down to a new low and it bounces off support where we've been bouncing quite a bit and you really make a double bottom right here and so you might just try for the scalp and if you're lucky, it goes all the way up, which it does. And you would have got a runner here. And you, you get a second chance here when it when you get the first entry and second entry. And so you got a failure right there. So you may take that one and ride it the rest of the way up. And, of course, you make the double top. And there's actually a uh, first move. And so that's considered a lower high. I like going short there. Still plenty of room back to the EMA. And that takes you into 2 o'clock. So um, I don't think you would have got a runner on this one. I think they come back and get you. I mean, you could have, I mean, if you exited at the midline, yeah, you probably got a runner on that. But uh, they probably got you before that anyway. I don't think you get a runner on that trade. And so there's just not a lot of runners. The only time I'd really look to get a runner on a day like this is if I could catch one of these failed breakouts or get in at the very low on a good bar like this one or maybe even this one. And he, even here, they came back and ran the break-evens. Here, they didn't. You could have ridden it all the way to the top. And this one, obviously, could have ridden it all the way down, too. So there's some runners in there, but they're fewer and far between and a lot harder to catch. So, And just not a lot of trades today. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, which in the end is not bad. The blue or red, are, there's six of them. But the problem is... Before lunch, really, before almost lunchtime, you only had one good trade. I mean, there's some others here, and you could. there's probably some other red ones you could, you know, uh, trades you could argue to be aggressive green entries, but that I didn't mark. It just depends on how, how aggressive you want to be. So I noticed we're heading for another hot new eye here, so we may get that next leg up during the overnight. Who knows? But anyway, uh, that's what I saw today, and uh, that's going to wrap up our week. I hope you had a good trading week. I mean, it, it's been brutal the last couple of days. Uh, today was actually, this afternoon, at least it started to move again. Early this morning, it was just brutal. I mean, you're, you're, you get some moves, but you get a lot of this sideways stuff. And finally, we got a couple of legs up and down kind of in, late, later in the afternoon. Uh, and it's usually the other way around, so... Yeah, there were moments today where I just wanted to close it up and say to heck with it. And uh, it's just it's just hard to sit there and wait. And then you end up forcing a trade. And that's the worst thing a trader can do. So you've got to be disciplined enough to sit tight when there's nothing much going on. And, and really this whole day, I mean, this whole range is what I mean, that whole range is only not even eight points. So there's just not a lot to work with there. And it's not clearly running up and down. It's running up and sideways. And so, it, you know, we didn't bounce. I mean, later as the day progressed, it became obvious where the channel was. But early on in here, it's really hard to know because we're not turning up or down at the same places. And that makes it really hard to trade a range if you're not getting consistent places where prices turn. You want consistency. And then it's like taking candy from a baby. But until it turns consistently over and over at the same places, I mean, this was pretty easy off the highs up here. But off the lows, you know, we're, we're turning up at different places each time almost. So, I mean, you can see the, cons the most consistent point. But we were lower, lower, a little bit lower. And then later this afternoon, it kind of got more consistent. So, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back Monday. I'm done for today. Hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you Monday. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. 
and we'll see you next time.